Hi, welcome back to the video of Solution Strategies. In the first part, you learned how to approach a problem. You have learned the solution strategies, guess and check, go through all the possibilities, and divide the problem into subproblems. In the second part of the series of solution strategies, you will learn the use of formulas, discover a structure, make a model, the brute force, and the divide and conquer solution strategies. As usual, I will use simple problems as an example to explain the solution strategies. So it makes sense to pause the video at the problems to try the problems yourself first. In that way, you will gain insight and develop problem solving skills. So let's start. The next solution strategy in the list is using formulas and equations. Recall that we solved this problem earlier by guess and check solution strategy. Now we will use formulas and equations to solve this problem. Now again, pause the video for a moment and try to solve this problem with formulas and equations instead of the guess and check solution strategy. Also try to follow the scheme that we discussed earlier to solve a problem. I hope you have been able to solve this problem with the formulas and equation solution strategy. Now let's discuss how you should have solved this problem. First, we define an X, which is the number of five cent coins. And we define a Y, which is the number of 20 cent coins. With these two variables, we can compose the equation one, two, and equation three. Equation one represents the amount of money in five and 20 cent coins. Equation two says that we have three times as many coins of 20 cents as five cents. And equation three represents the total number of coins. What we in fact have done now is formalize the problem by equations. Now we have formalized the problem, we can easily solve the problem by solving the three equations. And when we do this, we find that x is equal to 8. And by substituting the equations, we find that y is equal to 24. This means that we have 8 coins of 5 cents and 24 coins of 20 cents. As x represented the number of 5 cents coins, and y represented the number of 20 cents coins. With equation 3, we can calculate the total number of coins, which is 32. This is also the number of coins we found earlier with the guess and check solution strategy. The only difference is that solving the problem with equations is a bit faster and more efficient than with the guess and check solution strategy. Formally, we have to do the check in the last step of the problem solving scheme, which we do here explicitly to check whether the amount of money is indeed 5 euro and 20 euro cents. The next solution strategy in the list is called the discover a structure or pattern solution strategy. Sometimes a problem can be solved by discovering a structure or pattern in the problem. So let's see how this works. Take the following example in which we want to know the last digit of 7 to the power of 77. You might want to pause the video for a moment and try to solve the problem by yourself first. I hope you have been able to solve the problem. Now let's see how you should have solved this problem. On this slide, I have written the results of the first 12 powers of 7. Pause the video for a moment and try to find out what you notice in the last digits of the first 12 powers of 7. Well, did you notice it? If you look carefully, we see that the last digit 7, 9, 3 and 1 are repeated after four steps. This is a pattern which we could use to solve the problem. 
Now let's write the last digit in the table for a better overview. Here's the table. In this table, x is the power of 7, which we see in the first row. The last digit of the power is given in the second row. The pattern, which repeats after four steps, are given in an orange color here. Here we have taken the last digit of the first power as an example, which is number 7. That is, 7 to the power of 1 is 7. Now, how do we find the last digit of 7 to the power of 77, given this pattern? First, we have to find out whether we should repeat the last digit of the first, the second, the third, or the fourth power. To find that out, we should just try some powers and check what the last digit is and compare that with the last digit of the first four powers. Let's say we try 7 to the power of 10. Now, what is the last digit of 7 to the power of 10? Note that we want to do this without any tools. One way to do this is to divide the power x with the number of steps with which the last digits are repeated. In our example, this is 4. So we divide 10 by 4. 4 goes 2 times in 10 and gives us a remainder of 2. So probably 7 to the power of 10 and 7 to the power of 2 must have the same last digit, which is 9 in our example. When we check this in our table, we see that this is indeed true for 7 to the power of 10 and 7 to the power of 2. Both have the same last digit, which is 9. Now let's try another example. Let's say we try 9. To find out the last digit of the result of 7 to the power of 9, we divide 9 by 4. 4 goes 2 times in 9 and gives us a remainder of 1. So probably 7 to the power of 9 and 7 to the power of 1 must have the same last digit, which is 7 in our example. And when we check this in our table, we see that this is indeed true for 7 to the power of 9 and 7 to the power of 1. Now pause the video for a moment and please verify that following this strategy, we find that the last digit of 7 to the power of 77 is 7. And here is the step in which we check the answer. We calculated this answer on the computer to do the check. And indeed, we see that the last digit of 7 to the power of 77 is 7. The next solution strategy in the list is make a model. Often, mathematical models are used to solve complex problems. When we make a model of a problem, we omit factors or aspects which makes the problem complex. By doing so, we get a simpler problem or a situation which can often be solved by known and simple techniques. When making a model, you can think of, for example, making a diagram or drawing a picture. By using such a model, you can discover things that may help you to solve the problem. Now let's consider the following problem. In this problem, we have a heavy stone slab which must be transported. The slab is on three rollers and each roller has a circumference of one meter. Now the question is, if the rollers make exactly one rotation forward, then how far the slab will move forward? Now pause the video and take a moment to solve this problem. To solve this problem, we make a model of the problem. This means we visualize the problem and we write 
as many information as we can gather from the problem. We can deduce, for example, that one rotation is one meter, as the circumference is one meter. By doing so, the problem gets simpler. Now we can also visualize what will happen when the three rollers will make exactly one rotation. The rollers move one meter forward when they make one rotation, but the slab will also move one extra meter forward, which means that the slab will move in total two meters forward. As you can see, the problem is easier to solve when you can visualize it. The next solution strategy in the list is the brute force strategy. Now let's see what the brute force strategy is. The brute force strategy is in fact a simple approach to solve problems. It relies on sheer computing power to try all possibilities until the solution to the problem is found. This means that brute force is not using any algorithm to speed up the calculation to solve the problem. Brute force is often used if no algorithm is known that is faster or more efficient, which leads to a solution. The brute force strategy is used by, for example, the linear search algorithm and the bubble sort algorithm. And these algorithms we will discuss in the next video. The last solution strategy that we will discuss in this video is the divide and conquer solution strategy. The divide and conquer strategy is an important and probably the best known general technique to design algorithms. The divide and conquer technique is used for example by the binary search algorithm, the merge sort algorithm and the quick sort algorithm. In the next videos, we will see how these algorithms work. But for now, let's see how the divide and conquer technique works. The divide and conquer technique consists of three major steps. In the first step, we divide a problem of n size into a number of small subproblems of the same type and ideally of about the same size. We divide the original problem into subproblems until these become simple enough to be solved directly. In our example, the problem of n size is divided into subproblem 1 and subproblem 2, each of a half n size. In the next step of the divide and conquer technique, we solve each subproblem recursively. And in the third step, we combine all these solutions to get a solution to the original problem. Note that the divide and conquer technique is ideally suited for parallel computations, in which each subproblem can be solved simultaneously by its own processor. To wrap it up, in the second part of the series of solution strategies, we have discussed the use of formulas, discover a structure, make a model, the brute force, and the divide and conquer solution strategies. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.